Welcome back in Belgium. We met, like we said, in 2006. This time you have, in the, in the time you have made a uh, brought out a, a new release yeah. line. But when I was preparing the interview, there was one thing to be very sure: you are from uh, the new dynasty. Uh, dynasty. Yeah. A lot of brothers, nephews, people in your family, musicians. Can you explain this stuff? Why? Well, it, it all started from my daddy, Rayful. Yeah, you know, back in 1956 when he started his first band. He had a guitar player in his band by the name of Buddy Guy. And Buddy played with my dad. And Muddy Waters came through town performing. And my dad and Buddy Guy and him opened up for Muddy Waters and Lil Walter. And that's when Buddy met Muddy Waters and was invited to come to Chicago. And my dad had just started a family. A harmonica player. And he had just started a family and I'm the eldest of the 10. There's 10 of us. And um, I don't even remember learning how to play. I just grew up around instruments. And so I played all my young ages from six years old on up to 19 when I left home with Buddy Guy. But, um, and we just passed it down to the young, the brothers and sisters and the nephews. And so I kind of give it to my dad. He's, he's responsible for all this. When did you start it, uh, your first band yourself? No, I had a, um, I used to be the band leader for my dad. Oh, yeah, you were band leader. Well, I don't know about a band leader, but I had to do all the work. I had to pick up the musicians and drop them off and set up the equipment. I had to work hard, man. But, and my dad come in and uh, everything be prepared for him. And I did that for a long time, so that prepared me for when I got my own career going. I was used to having a band. You played with your father on just one album, is that correct? Um, just the album I produced, Ray from Neil Legend, yeah. yeah. And so also, um, when I was a kid, 13, 14, I played on the 45 records. Yeah. yeah. And you have also children? Oh yeah, yeah. They are also musicians. They also play. My, my daughter, Sarita Neil, she teaches at UCLA vocal lessons. And my son is an engineer, he lives in Toronto, and he, produ he helped me produce the, the album Let Life Flow. Uh, he did all the engineering on that and we won uh, album of the year. Yeah. And that was with Kenny Jr. It's about uh, I think 30 years ago that you have released your first album? Something like that. About 87, 87. Yeah, 87. yeah. That's when I released the first record. Did yeah. a lot of things change during that time? When you, when you look back on your first album, you look back now. Uh, music wise? Yeah, music wise. Or I don't. I don't. I think the music might be better now. I don't know because I. I think over the years, as playing more, you get, you know, more comfortable with the music and more confidence, and you know, you know it. Back then, I was still figuring it out, but when I listen to it, it's good. You know. So I don't know if it's better or what. No, no, but it's, it's, there's years between this album and the first album. So. Yeah, but if you put this album on and the 30-year-old one, uh, it's just as good. I would say. Do you still remember your first gigs that you were on? Uh, yeah, I was about six years old. And I played at my grandfather club where my dad met my mother at a little town, a little club called Spooners. And my grandfather owned the club and it was the only place for teenagers to come. And my dad used to play there on Sundays. And he met my mother at that place. And so after I come into the world, I remember six, seven years old when he had me with the Jane Brown boots and the, you know, the tuxedo pants. And he put me on the bar and I was singing and playing. And I remember when I finished, all the people called me to the tables and it was giving me $2, man, like a dollar here and $2. I go, 
man, I want to play music. <laughs> yeah. Your last album is from 2016. Yeah. You know how many family members are playing on it? Uh, don't know. I, I have my grandkids on there eight, too. Yeah. Eight yeah. 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 Great. How personal is the album? Um, well, this album was pretty well for my family to have a bit of history, yeah. you know, because if you look at it, that's my dad. It's Rayful. And, yeah, Bloodline. I, I, I thought that it was him, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, that's him, just, you know, faintly in the back. But, um, so did smart. you see the video? Uh, not yet. The Bloodline video, you should check it out. You got all the Neil family in the backyard having a big feast and show us how we do it, the way the Neil family roll. You can say eight members of my family are playing on my album. Yeah, that's eight right. Just eight. Yeah. What inspires you to make new songs? How, how do you collect or do you the ideas of the... No, I just go, well, I go, well, it's probably time to make another record. And then... You have no special moments to write songs or to do your songwriting now? No, it come from conversations. If I'm talking to somebody and something stick in my head, like I was talking to a guy and one day at the bar and he said he was having problems. He said, man, I'm a good man. And then we say, well, you know, blues ain't nothing but a good man feeling bad. Yeah, you know, I'll write it down, <laughs> you know. That's right. In your career, like you said, you have played with a lot of greats, mm -hmm. big musicians. What did you learn from them? Not to drink too much whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> because not real, not real. <laughs> well that's what put all of them in the graveyard most of uh, most of our older black musicians uh, the whiskey killed them uh, you know uh, and, uh, and and I was on my way doing the same thing because in my contract I would have Jack Daniel in my contract now I got water in it because I want to see my grandkids grow up and graduate yeah your music is rooted uh, in the sound, the Louisiana, Baton Rouge. Yeah, I was born in New Orleans and raised up in Baton Rouge. What makes that music so specific? What, the Swamp Blues? Yes, Swamp Blues. You always recognize that kind of music. Well, we're, Louisiana, we're like totally different from the rest of the United States. But I think the others, they say the same. No, no, they can't say the same. What, what, what makes you different? Because in Louisiana, south of Baton Rouge, I got New Orleans with the ragtime, the jazz, okay? They come up to my town and they play, so I got that knowledge. Up north, it's the Delta Blues musicians who come down from Mississippi and they, they moved in my neighborhood and I picked up the Delta. You go west of Baton Rouge, you got Lafayette, Opelousas, Mamou, and they play in the squeeze box in the Cajun Zydeco. So our music in Baton Rouge is a combination of all of that. That's why it's different. Okay, when you look to the future, I would have things that you, that you surely want to do once people that you want to play with or places that you want I'm to I'm in the future now. Well, I'm... This album is 75 this, this year, so you're young. I'm 61. 61. 68. Yeah. So... Well, that's, that's, that's so cool. So you want me to see the future? Yeah, no, but maybe I'm a, I, I, I always call it a, Well, why I said I'm in the future? The you say, well, the, I why mean. I said I'm in the future now is because I'm doing what I wanted to do back then. It was in the past. And I'm, I'm living in the future now because I opened up a studio that I dreamed to do to help the young kids that can't afford to record. That is happening now. I can go in and produce a group in my own studio and turn out music. And that was my plans back then. 
So when I say I'm living in the future, I had planned this future already. Now later on, down the road, I, I plan to play what I'm doing now. I only play festivals, I don't play clubs. I only play festival, and I only play the ones I want to play. You were satisfied with the show last night? I'm always, yeah. I'm yeah. satisfied. It was a great uh, show. You have to come up after the big ones, uh, Mr. Van Morrison, little Steve. I don't yeah. care about that, man. I I play <laughs> with say I play with Muddy Waters. I play with Holland Wood. Not mean. I play with John Lee Hooker, Big Mama Thornton, um, Junior Wells. Man, you name it. I done did it all for that, so that don't bother me. That's you have to be sure of it. We were there. It was great. Yeah. Very, very, very good. Yeah. I have the next question. I can't. It's about the future, but you already yeah. give an answer for this. I have a last question. What did you learn about yourself by being all the years a musician? What I learned by myself? I, ain't, I don't know what I learned about myself. I. I learned that I'm more creative than I thought I was because when I listen and I look at all my work that I've done over the years, I did a lot of stuff and it's been great. Even going to Broadway, I took blues to Broadway. I was on Broadway acting. I never dreamed of going to Broadway, you know, but I did it and I won the uh, Theatre World Award for the most outstanding new coming actor on Broadway. And and this is stuff that I didn't realize I was doing it until after I was rewarded for it. But I always give 150% of whatever I do. I don't I don't cheat myself. If I if I tell you I'm gonna do it, or if I, I take a project, I give all. And that's the way I do it. But, so I don't know, I, sometimes I amaze myself and then I look back and go, wow, I really did this, you know. So it's, it's like, must be meant to be or a gift that I have, you know, but it's nothing that I really worked hard at because I try to, people come to me and say, hey man, how you get started in this business? I say, I don't know. <laughs> What's the family business? <laughs> I just, I just been there, man. But um, I think 50% of the success have to be business. Even though you could be a great artist, the best, but if you don't understand part of the business, uh, how it works, you can forget about it, man. Yeah, and that's what I learned, that what I needed to do, what it take to get. But first of all, you have to have a vision. And if you got that vision and a goal set, then you, you go for it. But if you don't know where you're going, how you gonna go? <laughs> how you gonna get there? Against the wall. Right, right. Okay, Mr. Kennedy, this were my, my questions. Thank you for your time. And thank you for your great, great music. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it.